In this tutorial, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, ng module uh, in Ionic 2 applications. Uh, it's the bit of code in the app.module.ts file. And if you've seen any of my tutorials before, uh, you always hear me say or write that uh, when we create some new component or directive or something like that, uh, we have to add it to the module file before we can use it. So I wanted to talk in this video about why we need to do that, uh, what this file even is, and some of the, the specific things that are in this file and what they do. So ng module is a it's an Angular concept, and essentially it's a way to organize an application into these cohesive blocks of functionality. And so an ng module is any class with this ng module decorator at the top, and then you'll see it has this uh, object with various uh, properties and values in here. So at a glance, you can see that it's uh, specifying the components that we're using in the application. Uh, you'll also see pipes and directives are listed in here and providers down here. Uh, but there are some specific things you'll need to know about how to include certain things and where to include them and when to include them. And when it comes to Ionic applications specifically, you always see that we're using this entry components uh, array as well. Uh, as well as other things like uh, this for root and the ionic module. Um, so there's, there's a few weird things here. So again, the idea is that we're uh, kind of putting together all the components and directives that we use into this module, uh, and it's organizing all the code we need into this uh, block, into this module that we're going to use for our application. Uh, so all applications will have uh, at least one root module. And so that's what this is. This is the root ng module uh, that we're using for the application. Uh, but you can have multiple modules uh, in an application as well. So usually we're just using uh, the one. In basic applications, you probably just have the one module. Uh, if you're used to using Angular, uh, you may be more uh, familiar with including things like the HTTP module uh, independently. Uh, but we don't need to worry about any of that in an Ionic application. Uh, you may include a library perhaps at some point. I believe the charts uh, tutorial I did uh, included its own module. I'll link to that tutorial. I can't actually remember if it had its own module or not. Uh, but if we want to, you can import other modules into this module here uh, in the import section. And so what that's going to do is make all of the functionality that that module uh, sets up available. So that will have its own uh, components and pipes and directives added to that module and then by importing it we can use all of those things. And so that's kind of what the Ionic module is doing here. We're importing the Ionic module and uh, by doing that we're automatically adding all of the Ionic components and directives and things like that into our application. Uh, so when we're using Ionic obviously we use things like say a tabs layout or uh, we use uh, the Ionic buttons. Um, a, a list, this slides component, there's a whole ton of things that uh, Ionic provides. Uh, they provide these custom components and so rather than having to import every single one of those in manually, we can just import the Ionic module here and that sets it up onto uh, into our application for us. And that's why we call this for root my app here. Uh, that just passes our root component along to uh, the Ionic module so that it can set up all of those uh, components and directives uh, into our application for us. So of course we can include these uh, external modules, we can include the Ionic module, we can in, uh, include a charts module or some other third-party library, uh, but you can also create your own modules if you wanted to. And it's common to create something called a, a shared module, uh, so you would also import that uh, just in here as well, where the Ionic module is. Uh, and you could use that for things like, uh, say if you have a common set of components that you've created that you're always using in your applications, uh, you could set up these common uh, components into a shared module and then just import that module and that's going to save you from having to import all of these things all the time. So I've added some comments to each section of the ng module here to sort of explain what each part is doing. Uh, so I'm just going to go through that a little bit now. Uh, so at first we have our declarations and that's uh, going to be a list of all of the components, directives and pipes that the uh, module is going to provide to the application. 
Um, so these are things referred to as declarables, and these are the only types of things you're going to include in the declarations array. Uh, if you're creating some custom model class uh, or a provider or anything like that, anything that's not a component directive or a pipe doesn't go in the declarations. And it's also important that any uh, component, anything, any declarable is only declared once in one module. Uh, so you shouldn't put uh, say I've got the home page declared here, I shouldn't then have, uh, if I created a shared module or something else, uh, I shouldn't also declare that in the other module as well. Uh, then we have the, the imports which we've already discussed, uh, that's uh, for importing uh, other ng modules. Uh, it shouldn't be confused with uh, say imports like this, you can't import uh, normal classes or anything else into here, it's only for importing uh, ng modules. And we have the bootstrap property here, which just specifies the component that's going to be created during the bootstrapping process, uh, which I'm not going to go into in this tutorial. Uh, essentially, though, it just uh, the bootstrapping process is about creating the component and injecting it into uh, the DOM. So typically, you'll just have your one root component that's injected into the DOM, into the web page, and that sets up the application. And then we have this weird thing here, which is a bit more complicated, and that's entry components. And the idea behind entry components, this is also an Angular concept, but it's something that Ionic relies on quite heavily. The idea is that here we specify any components that are going to be dynamically loaded. It allows the application to make use of this thing called tree shaking, uh, which is a concept that I certainly don't have a, a deep understanding of, uh, but essentially it's about creating the, the smallest possible code we can uh, from our application by removing anything we're not using, uh, anything that's not necessary. So any pages that we're using in our application, which are dynamically loaded by Ionic, uh, we specify as entry components so that we can make use of that tree shaking. Uh, so in here, you'll just put uh, any pages that you've created in your Ionic application. So it's got the home page here by default, but if you go ahead and create some other pages, you should add them here. Uh, you don't just copy everything in the declarations to the entry components. Uh, if I just created some uh, component, uh, say my custom component, that's not a page we're using, it's just a, a custom com uh, component we're providing to the application, you don't need to add that to entry components. Uh, you, you only need to add uh, pages to entry components. And then finally, we have the providers uh, array here which is uh, quite simple. Uh, any providers that you've created in your application or services, uh, you should add here. So you may create, uh, you may be familiar with creating things like data services or things to integrate with APIs. Uh, so you just add those here, you import them at the top. So you add a data provider, maybe you've got a user, user provider, um, they just go here. Uh, the weird thing here, of course, uh, it looks like I need to back up my computer at some point. Let's get rid of that. Um, the weird thing here is this strange little uh, object we have in here um, that says provide error handler use class ionic error handler. Uh, this is similar to just uh, adding a, provi a provider normally like this. Uh, the difference is that what we're saying is we want to provide error handler, uh, but we want to use the ionic error handler class. So we're providing this to the application, but instead of using the default error handler, we're using Ionic's own custom error handler, which we're importing up here. Uh, so this just adds some extra niceness to the error reporting. Uh, you may have seen it when you're coding an application in Ionic and you make some uh, TypeScript error or something, you'll get a little pop-up over your app application that describes the error. Uh, so that's all that that's doing there. So I think that the concept of uh, ng modules is a bit confusing at first, but it can be a very powerful thing to use. Uh, starting out, you're not really going to have to create your own custom um, ng modules or anything like that. You don't have to worry about separating out parts of your code into custom modules until you get to a point where you think that might be useful to you and you can understand it a bit better. The main things to remember for Ionic applications, uh, you can ignore most of this to start off with. You just need to remember to add all of your components, directives, and pipes that you create into the declarations provided here. You need to remember to add any pages you create to entry components, 
any providers you add to the application, you should add as a provider here and also make sure to import all of these first, otherwise it won't work. And that's about it. You don't really need to worry about what's going on here. You don't need to worry about the bootstrapping. Uh, you just need to add things to the declarations, entry components and providers arrays. Okay, so I hope that helped clear up a, a little bit about what this app.module.ts file does and what it's all about. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.